Yo, my dudes, welcome, welcome back, and we are here to talk about the PS5, since, well, Sony not really doing it, for many reasons we will get into, but we are going to break down everything we know about the PS5 as of now, and answer some questions from some of you wonderful folks over on Twitch and Patreon as well about the PF5 and my opinion of everything that's probably going to happen, hopefully will happen, and also maybe touch on some rumors. So yeah, before we hop into that though, if you haven't already, and since you're staring at me on YouTube right now, why don't you go ahead and hit that wonderful, wonderful subscribe button right along with some bells and everything else you need to do below. And of course, if you want to ask me, your own questions, feel free to leave them in the comment or come on over to twitch.tv slash 20 show where I stream every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So let's go ahead, let's get into this, and let's start answering some questions that you guys have. So starting off, we have a wonderful, wonderful question here of, do you think Sony will announce the PS5 during E3 or earlier? I think it's going to be beforehand, since I'm guessing for a mini... Will they fully announce it? It probably more so showing up what it looked like, some control, probably some prices and whatnot. Because as of now, the only thing we really have is what is out there for the dead kits and the very laughable presentation they did at C at this shield with just a logo that looked the same as the old one. Except with a five. I guess don't chain what not broke, I guess. But as far as getting a full reveal of the system itself, I feel like maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's like one of them cases of if you would have at me a little bit ago, I probably would have said more than likely we will probably see something in February. But from how little we have seen with CES and whatnot, I'm kind of very much getting the vibe that Sony is very much kind of waiting for Last of Us to get out of the way. Because honestly, that's what it feels like. It feels like one of them cases of <laughs> they don't want to like commit super hard to it to Last of Us is out. Which I guess is for good reason because at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure most of us are trying to figure out like, hey, should I buy Last of Us on release? Can I hold out like five to six months? Or what will probably be a remaster of it or, you know, upscale, you know, 4K Game of the Year edition type of deal. And honestly, that's probably what they are doing. Because if you think about it, with The Last of Us being like the main thing for Sony for the rest of this year, other than, you know, the PS5. I could see them kind of holding off and waiting for Last of Us to get out, let that have the conversation, and then heavily go into what the PS5 going to be after the fact, and also probably use the last of us to demonstrate some stuff, such as some of the Batwoman compatibility stuff and whatnot. Right now, I kind of feel like Sony is literally just waiting for last of us. The question going to be, will we see something literally right after, or would they wait to E3? Personally, I'm starting to think they are just going to wait to E3, and then actually show off everything, and on top of that, kind of let Microsoft do whatever they're going to do, might it be quite tag wise, right along with the Syriac stuff and whatnot. Uh, since more than likely Sony will be back on on the night shift come E3 time once again, with them being the last conference, elite not counting Nintendo's anyway. And speaking of battle compatibility and the Last of Us here, our next question here is: uh, Do I think the Last of Us and Ghost of Shishimi Shishami will have a PS5 version? Yes and no. I personally don't think we're going to get like a full on like Wii Mantle for say like we did with Last of Us to the Definitive Edition or whatever the tagline was for that. I have no idea off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure what's going to end up happening if the system goes the way we believe in with the Batwoman compatibility and the reporting of PS4 games walking straight out of the box. I could just see them doing a patch, but with that being said, I could also see them doing, like, technically a port of just having a Game of the Year edition for either of them games with, you know, all the DLC, all the patches and whatnot, and just call it, like, you know, Game of the Year, Definitive, whatever tagline gonna be popular in that gen. And then it technically be a PS5 version, but deep down all it's gonna be is a collection of all the content. So that one I see happening with uh, Ghost and Last of Us more than likely. 
And I get once again going back to the discussion here of uh, the ports and whatnot. Our next question is, uh, do you think they will allow PS4 version to work on the PS5 and be upgraded? Yes, pretty, pretty much I answer that as simply I can be like a moment ago. Yes, I think uh, we will have elite battle compatibility to PS4 and a lot of games, especially for party games, will probably have 4K patches or 8K patches are ready to go pretty much roughly probably around launch, maybe a little after depending on what game we are talking about. How much do you think the new consoles are going to cost? This is, this is where we're going to get interesting because we have, of course, Microsoft doing what they're doing with the Series X and then the other random ones we have heard about as we have heard about most of the development being multiple consoles and with the name like Series X. And a pretty good chance that we are going to have multiple consoles on launch and then not counting what's going to come afterwards. When it comes to Sony though, Sony, I feel, I feel like... Well, more than likely, if they have multiple consoles, it's probably just going to be broken up between, like, hard drives and whatnot. So, because of that, if we talk about how much we think it's going to cost, honestly, well, I feel like Microsoft is probably going to fall more on the $500 lane, probably pretty equal to what the X was. I have a feeling Sony probably could easily do the same. I could see Sony equaling what they was uh, for the Pro, or maybe like a hundred dollar cheap bolt. So to be on it, I don't think we're gonna get no like two ninety nine or anything. We are probably easily looking at more than likely four ninety nine will be my guess. That is what I foresee happening. I could see Sony releasing the I get the better version with the big old hard drive for like five and then probably one with like five hundred like megabytes or maybe a terabyte hard drive for, you know, probably half, like, maybe, maybe three, maybe 350, with, you know, a couple of little bells and whistles here or there, or for all we know, Sony might go the halfway mark of being, like, heal the most expensive one for five, that is backward compatible with everything, and then heal the one that is uh, only 399 and the hard drive not big, it don't have backward compatibility and whatnot. I could see them doing that as well. From everything we've been hearing about is it going to be backward compatible, is it not? I could see that maybe being something that could cut down the pie, especially if the PF5 backward compatibility is hardware emulation and not just bluntly emulation. So if it does end up being compatible with like PF1, PF2, PS3, and then on a physical level, which would be, you know, the best ideal case scenario, I could see tripping some of that stuff out would bring the price down, you know, a couple dollars and maybe get it to about that $300, $400 range. So pretty much my answer is I think one unit will be $399 and the other unit $499. Well, Microsoft will probably go 5 to 6 do you think the net gen consoles are going to last seven plus shields again? Personally, personally, I could, I could see, I could see the console generation lasting longer than that. To be honest, it, it, I feel like it's all gonna come down to what exactly Microsoft is gonna do and how much weight that gonna hold. Because obviously, with Microsoft, we know we go in the way of cell phones with with probably a new system every two years or so. When it comes to Sony, on the other hand, I think Sony's still going to do that, but probably nowhere near as aggressively as uh, Microsoft is. So I could see I could see Sony pretty much doing the whole PF5, PF5 Pro, PF5 Slam, you know, the, the normal type of deal. But the only thing is about Sony, I could see Sony doing that probably every three so if this generation go the way it's seeming, with it being small little upgrades as we go along, I personally could see either Sony or Microsoft in that case, could Microsoft going to do it. But I can see Sony probably releasing PF5 and every three you'll keep going. The question going to be at that point is how long is it going to take before Sony just drop the 5 and it just become PlayStation? Same way as for Xbox. So, deep down, honestly, I could see this going more than seven years, but only by technicality will this cell phone style market, if it holds any weight, could prolong all of this. And then not counting to 
<laughs> the future that we build into with the gaming system being coming more server based and cloud based. Yeah, I could honestly see it going more than seven years. I could see it easily going ten and then a decade from now we'd be full on into cloud territory. And speaking of more like gaming stuff, our next question here is do I think there will be an enhanced version of Final Fantasy VII Remake for the PS5? Yes, but in the same camp as uh, Last of Us and Ghosts as well. Uh, the only difference is obviously part 2 through 4, however many parts that Final Fantasy VII end up being, will be on PS5, part 1 being PS4 with probably backward compatibility playing that. With that being said, I could also see them just doing a bundle deal in, <laughs> in 15 years, maybe PS5, maybe something else. But a bundle deal with uh, Final Fantasy uh, 7. So yeah, I get by technicality once again. Yeah, Final Fantasy 7 we make will be on PS5 in some way. Am I interested if the PS5 have a new VR headset? As of now, honestly, I feel I feel like leap from Sony anyway. I feel like Sony is mainly working on getting everything backward compatible here. Since I believe the PS4 controller were going to work. I believe they also said the VR just going to work as well. And like move controllers and whatnot. So we know VR is not getting dropped. At least not right away anyway for Sony. The question going to be is like how how much I get R&D going to go into this. And how much time going to go into this. So it just begs the question of will Sony do a full on VR remaster type of deal or will they just slowly up, upgrade up in it such as the, the lenses and maybe the motion with the camera and whatnot. I think we will probably get one eventually if the VR is you know going to be possible or possible to keep getting income come into the PS5 which hopefully we will. But I don't think we'll be seeing a new headset anytime soon, though. But with all that being said, though, honestly, net generation is going to be super, super interesting. And I cannot wait to see how Sony is going to go head-to-head -head with Microsoft. Because let's be totally honest, going into the PS5. Microsoft, honestly, I feel like it on the more solid side because of how much they have been building in infrastructure and the stuff they do with Xbox. So it's going to be very interesting to see what the PS5 is going to do. Might it be for money? Might it be to the quality of the game? Not counting the power distance that we know exists. And everything about this generation, it's going to be fascinating to watch because I believe this is the beginning of, I get technically the future of gaming, elite for consoles. Since a lot of stuff is going to change this generation and a lot of stuff going to fail. And a lot of stuff going to pretty much show where we're going to be 10 years from now. So honestly, I can't wait for this generation to begin later this year. And hopefully all the other rumors about backward compatibility is true. Because I would love to play me some PS2 games on the PS5. But with that, we will have to see. Hopefully come E3 we will know more. Or maybe before it. Maybe, maybe a day after Last of Us come out. We will see. But either way, if you are interested in more of my random opinions. And you want to ask some questions. Like I said, feel free to hit up Patreon right here. For one daughter, you can pretty much give me any question you have, and I will answer it as long winded as possible with me, since I, I don't know when to shut up. And of course, if you do want to come on over to Twitch and talk to me directly one on one, let me gush about my uh, RPG addictions. Feel free to come on over to twitch.tv slash pony show where I stream every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday over there. And of course, here on YouTube. Once again, do the like, do the favorite, do the subscribe. New videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And everything else in the description below. And with that, let me know what you're hoping for the PF5 and your capability theory or your thoughts in general. And I will catch you in the comment, my dudes. Oh, I thought I was going to die. Because you kind of did, Riku.